As content creators, we are always trying to increase our productivity and also our overall production quality. With the Sony ZV-1 and a few modifications, I think I finally found the perfect addition to all of my camera equipment. So let's go ahead and check this out. So let's go ahead and address the commonly asked question that everybody has about the Sony ZV-1 and that is how do you get a wider viewing angle? Well, a lot of companies, a couple of companies that I know of have created wide angle lenses and the most commonly used one is the Ulanzi, the WL-1 and I'm pretty sure that stands for wide lens but anyways the only downfall of that one is it has 3M tape and it's an adhesive that sticks to the end, the end of the lens. So when you're moving the camera in and out, you know, you do risk that lens coming off over time. And I have had people complain that it didn't stay on very long. Now a couple of hacks to that is put all of the kit together and lay the camera down on its back and then put the lens on top of that and let it sit for at least 24 hours and it'll adhere a lot better than you know just sticking it on there and just going ahead and shooting because it didn't have enough time to sit because in all actuality stickers are still a form of glue and they still need to dry now right now i'm not using anything on my sony zv1 but I do have the lens here in my pocket and I'm about to put it on here, but I did augment something else with this that makes this even more proficient. So let's check it out. And now that's a lot better. And I don't have to hold the camera out as far. Now one thing that I do like about this also, and I'm sure that is the case with other adaptations of this camera, are it has threads on the outside so you can actually put ND filters on. So I have a variable ND filter on so I can keep my camera settings at my typical 24 frames per second and have it at the most optimum setting for video and then just uh, adjust the variable ND lens to my liking so I can keep the histogram balanced and always achieve that best exposure that possibly can have to create the better videos. Another thing that I really love about this camera is the fact that it's got a wind muff on it. So it is very windy outside today and this is going to help alleviate any of that annoying wind noise that will probably turn most viewers off from watching a creator because they can't quite hear you or it's just too distracting. You saw my last video of the iPad Pro. All of that B-roll was actually shot with this camera and it looked fantastic and I didn't do any slow motion however this camera does do slow motion and it does 240 frames per second very well I wouldn't shoot any higher than that because you actually lose a little bit of quality with the Sony ZV-1 um, especially if you go up to 960 frames per second then it pretty much looks like it's a you know 320p <laughs> it looks horrible so you do lose a little bit of that quality but it's really not that noticeable now I'm really hoping that this wind isn't distracting you too much because it is extremely windy in this little alleyway that I'm at behind my house. But the trees are blowing all over the place. It's creating a lot of really, you know, relaxing noises and so don't go to sleep on me. But it can be distracting if you're trying to talk to the camera. So now with the stabilization and the variable ND filter and being able to keep your video settings just right and you just got to keep glancing over every once in a while to make sure you're staying well balanced within your histogram and you can quickly adjust it that way. It makes life so much easier. It's so light and I've got this handle that comes with the creator's kit that I use with this camera so I can hit the record button and do all of the zoom, the zoom features and take pictures all from the handle and the ease of use even in automatic mode it does a really good job my daughter went with me the other day to St. Andrews State Park in Florida and I gave her this camera and she got some really great pictures and video footage and she enjoyed using the camera and she never once said, hey, there's no viewfinder in this because that's pretty much what she's used to using. But without a viewfinder and just looking at the screen, it can become a little bit hard to see. But with that being said, she still was able to make sure that she kept everything centered and focused and did a really good job and she enjoyed the camera and she inquired about it, which no, dad's not gonna give you his camera, but 
She, now she's a school teacher now, so she can go buy her own. Love you, Holly. Another thing that I like to use with this camera is the UU rig cage for it and it's got a little wooden handle on it i love this handle i love this cage because it leaves access to not only the battery door but the memory card especially when you're shooting b-roll inside your studio you want to keep taking the card in and out and stick it in your card reader for your computer you know you don't have to take the whole kit apart like you would normally but if you are curious about the UU rig cage that I'm using and the creator kit handle and then the variable ND filter and of course the Yulon ZWL1 wide angle lens kit. I'll link it all down below so you can go check it out for yourself. But all in all, I highly recommend this camera for pretty much anybody, whether you're vlogging, you're shooting B-roll, or you're using it as your main camera to either start your YouTube channel or augment material within your YouTube channel because it is absolutely the most flexible camera that I use. The cinematic video that you get out of it, you can shoot in log. You have your slow motion. It's very lightweight, so you can vlog with this all day. The audio is amazing. And that stabilization is just rocking. One of the things that I did not like about Sony's in the beginning when I first started my YouTube channel three years ago was I didn't like the Sony menu system and I had the A6000 and that was the most confusing mess probably because I had only shot with Canon and it's very straightforward it's very clean interface for Canon but for the Sony it just it was different words to use for the same meaning of different things and it was just confusing and it got frustrating and then soon thereafter like a couple of years after that they started augmenting a newer menu system for all of their cameras that more so looked like Canon it wasn't to copy Canon but it put everything in closer proximity so it made more sense and now I'm more of a Sony fan than I've ever been even though my main cameras are the Canon R5 and I've got the Canon EOS R. I don't see myself changing anytime soon from Canon because I do very much enjoy those cameras and not to mention if I didn't it would still be way too expensive for me to try to convert all of my Canon stuff over to Sony. But that doesn't mean that you can't use Sony equipment with Canon. Everybody wants to stick with one or the other, but I mean, I have so many different types of cameras now that to pretty much cover every scenario, whether it be from Insta360, GoPro, Sony, Canon, it just doesn't matter because if you're creating content that is interesting for your viewers and you color grade them in such a similar fashion that they don't really stand out one from the other, then why change? So let's check out a couple of these examples. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to share my two cents for the Sony ZV-1. Everybody else has had their input on it and I just wanted to put my stamp of approval on it as well. Do I think it's a great camera? Absolutely. Is it capable of doing almost everything for your YouTube studio? You betcha. And I'm going to continue using this one for a couple of years at least. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, notification bell, and I'll see you all next week. Take care.